honestly, I, you know, I want to know what people think about this homily because it's close to my heart. It's one of my favorites. Let's get it. Let's I've never seen it. anybody else do it, I'm so let's just, yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. Isn't it curious how forgetful we are as human beings? I mean, just think about it. So not only do we forget immediate things that just happened, what we ate, sometimes when people ask us how our day was, we think back, what, what did I even do today? What was today? And then we forget major events in our life. Yeah, I'm convinced we're so forgetful that if we watched our life back on tape, first of all, it'd probably be a very boring tape. And it may be only interesting to one person. But if we watched our life back on tape, I imagine most of the time we'd be waiting in anticipation for what happens next. And I think we'd say often, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot that happened. Isn't it curious how forgetful we are? We're so forgetful. We have a strange saying that people will often tell us, or will tell to other people, remember what you have. You know, so we're sitting there complaining about our family to somebody, and then somebody reminds us, well, remember what God gave you. Remember the family that you have. And in those moments, whether they're reminding us about our family or the things that other things that God has given us, our place in life, our job, what have you, maybe not in the moment, because maybe we're angry at our family, but maybe we could take a step back and say, oh yeah, I have forgot. And how can we forget? They're right there. And yet somehow, we can forget even the things that are right in front of us, like the beauty of our family or gratitude for our job, or our place in life, or our circumstances in life. So people remind us, remember what you have. You know, we can even forget who we are. Strangely enough. You know, it's, this is actually a plot device in many stories that we tell. Where the hero becomes the hero, not through any spectacular event, not through any miracle, not through profound intervention, but just by remembering who they are. And then from that, they go and become that hero that they're meant to be. So we even forget who we are. You know, this is the plot device in the movie The Lion King. So there's a scene in the movie, and I encourage you to go watch this scene. It's a beautiful scene. Great reflection on our relationship with the father. But there's a scene in the movie where Simba finds out the baboon... Uh, baboon? Rafiki. Rafiki. The baboon Rafiki, thank you, um, it, it knows his father, or knew his father. And so he chases after the baboon, and he says, You knew my father? And Rafiki says, correction, I know your father. And Simba says, well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but he died. And Rafiki says, nope, wrong again. And he takes off over to the tree line and he says, he's alive. And I will show him to you. Follow Rafiki, he knows the way. So Rafiki takes off in the jungle and Simba's chasing after him. And it's, it's, they're getting closer to the heart of the jungle. And all of a sudden, he comes face to face with Rafiki's hand, and Rafiki says, Stop! Shh! Look down there. And so Simba, as if he's about to catch uh, some prey, is prowling forward. He goes down and in between some reeds, and then down a hill, and then comes face to face with a puddle, and in this pond, he sees himself. And of course, he says to Rafiki, that's not my father, that's just my reflection. And Rafiki gives the best no ever, I think it's a no only a teacher could give. Rafiki says, no. No, look harder. So Simba does. And a moment later, his face starts to morph into the face of his father. 
And he looks startled. And Rafiki says, you see, he lives in you. And then it breaks. And suddenly, a moment later, he's in this field. And his father is coming toward him in, in the clouds. And he hears his father's voice. And his father says, Simba. Simba, you have forgotten me. And Simba, this is the worst thing he could ever heard of. Of course he hasn't forgotten his father. He hasn't spent a day thinking about his father. Or not thinking about his father. <laughs> of course he hasn't forgotten. But then his father says, You have forgotten yourself and so forgotten me. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You are my son. That's the change of the movie to Lion King. That's the whole crux of the movie. The, the, the pivot point on which everything turns is just Simba remembering who he is in the eyes of his father. And then Simba goes away from this Hakuna Matata, don't worry, to deciding to take on the responsibility that might even risking his life to step into his role as king in the way of his father. Everything turns on that moment, just him remembering who he is. There's a lot of noise in our hearts. There's a lot of noise in our hearts almost always, but especially during these times. But this moment, we should quiet our hearts so that we can look harder. So we can look harder at this moment. And what do we see? If we look hard enough, well, firstly, we see this simple human being before us. And then we know in faith that this human being is God. And that, that itself is a, is a marvel. If we could look hard enough at that, maybe we could come to understand more about who this God is and what he's calling us to and the beauty of him and his goodness. Because we see in that our God's humility, which is a strange word to ascribe to God. And so that itself is to be pondered. Why would God show himself in humility? It seems almost antithetical to God. And so that tells us something about who God is, something to be pondered, but also his extreme generosity. And so if we look hard enough, we start to see who God is in a way that nothing else except his word could speak. But then as we look closer and as we realize what that means, we see God in this. We see God in us. You see, he lives in you. You see, we celebrate today, certainly, the only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. But especially today, because the Son is always chosen by the Father. But in this moment, through his choice of his Son, he also chooses us and calls you son and daughter. And that's the marvel of today. Remember who you are. You are your father's son. You are your father's daughter. You are more than what you have become. And so, no more Hakuna Matata. It's a tempting lie. A very tempting lie. It's the lie that says, oh, don't worry. You know, the, the king's very... He's, it's kind of tyrannical, you know, it's a lot of responsibility there. You know, that's not the place of your happiness. You know, rather, lay, lay back. You know, life, you know, just, just find the path that you want. Find your happiness. No, no more Hakuna Matata, because saying that means saying life doesn't matter. You can just do whatever you want. Because ultimately, it's, that's just what we're here for. Just our, our personal happiness and that's it. That's not what life is all about. It's a tempting thing to choose, but that's not what life is about. Life is not just about happiness. 
You know, we all want happiness and we should accept happiness when we come, but the, the better thing to choose, the thing that life is really directed towards is the choice of goodness. It's telling a good story with our lives. And then maybe if we did that, then maybe we could experience the more distilled happiness, the more intense happiness, the happiness that we'd almost need a, a different word for. And maybe we call it joy. And this comes from choice of goodness, of telling a good story with our life. And in this moment, we remember that the story we're telling, it begins with our God's word, and it awaits our response. And so we tell a good story by responding to this moment, by responding to his word. And tell a good story while you can. I just got a text two days ago, a great friend of mine, was uh, rushed, uh, emergency to the hospital, the situation is bad, she's carrying her cross right now. But she's told a good story with her life. And so she's prepared for this moment. And this moment even adds to the beauty of her story. But tell a good story while you can, because we don't know when it's going to be time for us to carry our cross, which is the message of Advent. Wake up, now is the time. Change while you can. Tell your story while you can. Give your response to God while there's still time left. Isn't it just fascinating how forgetful we are? We're so forgetful that it's important that every year we celebrate the same thing. We celebrate the incarnation of our Lord so that every year we might have an opportunity to quiet our hearts, to look harder, and in that manger to encounter the God who would marvelously do such a thing, and to come to understand him through his word. But in that, and seeing the eyes of Jesus in the manger, we might also remember who we are. God bless you.